I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. We're back live at the NRA Meetings and Convention. As always, I'm your host, Seth Swerzik. Thanks for watching the Hornady Podcast. Sitting down with our good friend, Josh Clough. Josh, thanks for coming over. Absolutely, and Happy to be here. Another NRA show. I think uh, this is my 18th year in a row. Nothing like tradition. No, not at all. And, and a good show so far. I mean, a ton of booth traffic, obviously. A lot of people, and I, I've said this before on another podcast, but Texas could, could fill their own show. Oh, it, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's great, great to be down here. Well, I want to bring up a topic specifically because it seems to be a trend on our podcast uh grizzle bear encounters and and <laughs> I, I i need to listen to the recent one you did there but yes yeah so that nothing gets the blood pumping like a little bit of adrenaline a little bit of near-death experience so i know you were involved in one i don't know all the details but i want you to spill it out what what was your grizzle bear encounter that that changed your life yeah well i tell you what uh it was uh me and dino dino from zarovsky he's been uh, one of my best friends for years and years and i love the guy to death um, but he's not real big on some of the details when we go on these hunts. And this is many years ago, geez, I've been hunting with him and I've been fortunate to go all around the world with him. But this is, I don't know, 18 years ago, probably. Uh, anyway, we're doing, I should add some details prior to this story. It's okay, going to yeah. make a little bit more sense. Yeah. But, uh, so he decides, he says, Hey, you want to go to Kodiak Island, Alaska and hunt Sitka Blacktail deer? And I'm like, heck yes, I do. That would Sign be awesome. Up. He says, all right. He says, well, I got this cool little place, Larson Bay Lodge, which was a phenomenal place. Um, but there was just a little bit of disconnect on how the hunt would transpire. So he says, you know, we're going to go out and run a boat. We're going to have a guide with us. The guy carries a 416 and no worries. Cause I asked him, you know, Hey, any bear spray or pistol or anything like that? And he's like, Oh no, we'll be fine. I'm like, okay, great. And I know there was a lot of foxes there and I love predator hunting. Right. So I wanted to get a fox. So long story short, I bring a 65 284 back in the day, you know, used to hunt yeah, that quite absolutely. a bit. 143 ELDXs, and then I've got my little 243, right? I was going to shoot my deer with my 65, and then if we got a chance and, you know, film the show or everything, I was going to go back out and try to call some fox in and get fox with my 243. Didn't want to blow the pelt up once, get it, keep it, right? Right. So, anyway, everything's great, right? We land there, everything's good. We go out the first day of the hunt, and uh, the boat drops us off, and we take off hunting. Like, okay, well, this is awesome. You know, it's great. We're by ourselves, you know, don't have to worry about a guide or anything like that. Yeah. And we end up, you know, two and a half miles back up on top of this hill. We see this big buck. I shoot it. We're coming back down, see another buck. Dean shoots it. Great. We win. Yeah. Absolutely. First day, two out of the way, packing it down. And uh, I bring my big KU 7200 with my game bags, everything. So I'm processing the deer up on the hill. We get them all packed out. Dean's got a little fatty pack, right? Just big <laughs> enough to carry his camera. And he's like, well, can I help? I'm like, yeah, here, you know, carry my gun. He's like, oh, happy to do that, right? So anyway, now as I preface that story is we've got the two deer in there. So now I'm covered in blood, right? My pack's all covered in blood. Fast forward about three days later into the hunt, two days later in the hunt. And uh, the camera matted, we had gone up this big draw. And the first three days, we're seeing deer absolutely everywhere. Just deer, deer, deer. And this third day, we're up this strong. We're not seeing hardly anything for deer. Didn't register. Didn't think anything about it. I'm like, well, this spot just isn't as good as the other spot. It's right? hunting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, we, uh, we start making our way back to where the boat's going to pick us up. And we've got probably a mile to get back down to the coastline or to the shore. And the cameraman says, well, hey, you guys sit right here. We're going to go down and we're going to get the drone. We left the drone and everything on the side of the beach, right? Okay. So I get it up and going, we'll fly it up. It's like, okay. So we're sitting there. And this, you know, we've been sitting in this one little spot, Dean and I, for about 30 minutes. 30 minutes go by. And finally, I, I got to get up. I've got to go to the restroom. So I, you don't, oh, I should say, okay. So Dean, I, I got to backtrack, right? I'm okay. backtrack on my story. So Dean, after we decide that I, I tell him I'm going to bring my 65 284 and then my 243, he's like, well, you're going to bring two guns? I'm just going to leave my gun at home. No problem. We'll just shoot deer. With okay. Not a problem, right? So <laughs> now back to the story, right? We're on the edge of this, this little like bluff that goes down in there. Been sitting there for 30 minutes. I get up, go to the bathroom. I leave my gun sitting right there. I just, you know, walk 10 feet to the side. I come back and then all of a sudden Dean goes, Josh, grab your gun, right? And it was one of those things that Dean and I mess around with each other a lot. We enjoy life. We enjoy, you know, to have a good time. But it was just the tone of his voice. Like, I knew he wasn't messing around. So, man. So, I run back, and he's got his gun, which is a little 243, 
right? Plenty of and, stopping power. Yeah, and he's up kitty corner to me, and he's about five feet in front of me. So I grab my gun, and instantly I just rack a shell in the chamber, right? And I'm looking, and the way this hill kind of comes down in front of us, right? I'm looking up, and I'm looking up. I'm thinking instantly, thinking a bear, right? Yeah. But I don't see anything, right? And he's like, he's like, do you see it? Do you see it? I'm like, no, I don't see it. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm looking up at this hill. And all of a sudden, I see the grass moving literally from, from here to that booth. Right, so 15 yards in front of us, mm-hmm. and I'm going, oh my gosh! So now, you know, instead of going up the hill, I pan the gun down. I sat there and I can see the top of his back, and then all of a sudden, it comes up and it clears the grass and it sets like you know, it's on its on its, hon- on its haunches, on its hind legs, and it's just sitting there looking at us. And I'm like, so I've got six five two eighty four. Dean has his two forty three, and there is this giant Kodiak Alaskan grizzly bear at this time, is now like 12 yards away. And so now we start saying, okay, you know, they kind of go over some of the safety protocol, everything like that. So we start talking like, hey, get away, bear. Hey, hey, go away, bear. We're right next to each other, you know? Yep. So this thing, now it's getting to be, I mean, one giant step and this thing's on us, right? So we're sitting there and I don't know what to do now, you know, and I'm already, I've made my mind up that, you know, last thing you want to do is shoot a bear, right? right. So, I mean, it's one of those, it's, like killing a human, right? You're going to go, court, you got to prove all this stuff. And that's the last thing I want to do anyway. Yeah. But at this point in time, it's within our threshold. And it's like, okay, if this thing makes a sudden lunge towards us, we're going to be forced to have to shoot this thing. So anyway, you know, we're yelling at it, go away, bear, go away, bear. And it's getting agitated. Now it starts swamping the grass. Oh. So it's taking its front paws. And the grass is like, you know, probably, I don't know, four, three, four feet tall. It's got little shrubs and stuff. And it's just, and it, I can't explain the sound, but it's just, whoa. Oh, it's not growling and it's, it's like not a, standing up like or anything like that. It's, yeah, it's just like a woo, woo. And I'm going, oh man. So now it's getting super tense, right? And he's just taking his front paws and just smacking the grass and just ripping the grass up. And at that point in time, I'm like, there's no doubt this bear is charging. I've got my, I've got my crosshairs right between its eyes. One subtle movement. Here we go. You know, I'm going to shoot as many times as I can. And then Hope I'm thinking, the all right, I'm going to stand behind a little bit behind Dean and just push his ass to the ground and, you know, get out of here. But, uh, this, this goes on for, you know, it seemed like forever, but it goes on for a good probably minute, 30 seconds to two minutes. And eventually he just, he gets kind of stand up. He takes a couple more steps towards us, but it's not violent, right? It's not an aggressive. And he's sitting there, he's swatting. And then finally he just swats the grass one more time, turns, you know, kind of chomping his teeth a little bit and just, and starts just gradually walking away. So I'm like, oh my God. But there was a point in there when he was just swatting the grass and just making that wolf sound. I'm like, this is right, it. here we go. This is it. I got one chance, right? So when you recap, Dean tells the story. He's got one. He goes to reload his magazine box and he pulls this little 243 out. And he says, this is what I've got between me and this giant Kodiak Alaskan grizzly bear. And it, I mean, it was intense. It was um, one, obviously it was, it was a cool encounter, you know, now that we in look hindsight. back on in hindsight, right? Um, but, you know, you learn many things throughout the process in life. And I know now that uh, we're going to hunt with Dean, I'm going to, I might talk to the guy, the outfitter personally, myself a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, we, we laugh and joke about it, you know, 10, 12 years later, however long it's been. But it was, uh, it was a pretty intense situation. Yeah. yeah. I must admit, I was, yeah, my hands were shaking. My, I could literally hear my heart beating. It was. Yeah. So then, so it gets better. So eventually, you know. As this bear starts walking away, well, in the hindsight of us yelling at this bear, I could hear the drone getting up. So, you know, the cameraman's finally got the drone up and had to talk to those guys. Um, so after we get done, you know, we kind of get back down to the hill. Well, we're talking to them, you know, about what was going on and they could hear us yelling and screaming. So we actually, at one point in time, I didn't know if the drone was going to scare the bear or, you know, oh, freak the bear out. Yep. So I told him like, hey guys, you know, put that drone down. So the cameraman... Uh, that was actually flying the drone and he was kind of the editor of the show as well. He says, don't you dare get that drone down there. You keep that thing flying. If they're going to get eaten, we're going to get this thing on video, right? <laughs> oh so God. it was hilarious part of it there. But no, it was a pretty intense moment there for a while, man. I can't even relate, uh, you know, when you have something that's that potentially dangerous at that range and, you know, people hunt bears with a lot of different cartridges, but a 243 and a 6.5, 284 usually aren't one of them. It's generally not, no. And they can clear so much ground with one bound. Yep. And at, yeah, 10, 12 yards, I can't relate. I mean, you can feel your heart in your neck, like your arteries are popping right. out of your neck. 
I had his Rofsky X5 on there, and it was at three power. And at three power, all I could see was just the front of this thing's nose and its eyes. And it was like, okay, wow. here we go. Well, hopefully. I'm not a very good shot as it is, man. But, <laughs> you know, in that situation, it was like nothing else. Like, he kept yelling. I couldn't even hear him yelling. I could, I knew myself I was yelling. Like, in our, you know, our casual, hey, get away, bear. Go away, bear turned into, you know, pretty Top of violent. Your lungs. Get away, bear. Get out of here. You know, pretty much pleading with it. Yeah. Please go away, bear. Please <laughs> go away. You can hear the tears in your voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nuts. Well, thanks for sharing that with us and for our listeners. You know, uh, if you're going to Kodiak, Alaska, cartridge up. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've, I've known two people now who have had pretty dramatic bear encounters, and uh, those are not good odds. So, no. Nope. So, subsequently, we did, a, uh, we did a hunt in Admiralty Island with Glacier Guides uh, here a couple years ago, uh, and we both brought 300 PRCs on that hunt and bear spray. 100%. So. <laughs> We, we, we learned our lesson. <laughs> Word to the wise, 300 PRC, some bear spray. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, Josh. Thanks again for Absolutely. coming on, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.